I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So this might be a little bit of a different episode, ultimately. I I'm going to try a slightly different format for how I present this because it's a little bit weirder. And it's it's almost, it's like kind of more cut and dry than previous episodes believe it or not even more cut and dry than last week's okay like when i read it the first time i basically knew what was going on and then when i did some research <laughs> it kind of revealed to me what was going on so it's gonna be a good one i don't know if it's gonna be the longest episode but it's gonna be a good one. Oh, did i tell you i finally got my hands on more cryptkins did you i've got some but they, i sent them to my parents house by accident Oh yeah, yeah. Hot hot topic starting to carry them. Oh, right on. Yeah, I I got four more. We got both of the the Mothmen. Nice. We got a Jersey Devil and a Chupacabra. Hell yeah. Your Phoenix, I'm pretty sure, is like a hyper rare Cryptid. Not even gonna lie. Yeah, I like it. It's got that like trans trans plastic. It's nice. Yeah, I, it's a gorgeous looking little mini i think it's a repaint of the thunderbird actually it's it let me uh i'd have to look it's very similar i think the the little flame tuft on the top might might be an addition to it but i think you're yeah right. i i think they might have done a slight retool because usually usually that's how it is there's always like a even a repaint is considered a retool because it's they use a similar probably they use the same model for the tooling but they change it around a little bit. Mm -hmm. Anywho, um, welcome to this week's episode of Alice's Mothman. It's basically Alice isn't dead. It's just instead of the main character being a human, they're Mothman. <laughs> I'm John. I'm Brandon. Last week, we covered a, a hoax, right? Yeah, man. This week, I'm covering a cryptid. Yeah. That also might be a hoax. It's a little bit more nebulous than previous cryptids. And we'll, we'll get into why that is. Okay, I like it. A lot of the stuff, a lot of the stories we have, they're more or less... There's this kind of shroud around them that has, like, something that links them to fact. Like a newspaper article or something along those lines. This one's a little different. Oh, um, is this all, like like, spoken word or blog? Sort of actually, but let's Ooh. let's get into it a little bit. Okay. Let me let me give you the the list of things so we can you can try and guess what's going on. Uh huh. The first sighting was nineteen fifty five. Okay. So I'm back into the modern scale. Took a yeah. took a little detour for Black Shuck, but you know me. I'm 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 a modern guy for the most part. Its last sighting was two years ago. Oh shit. Yeah. Overall, there have been four confirmed sightings, and by confirmed, I mean like the the canon sightings of this creature. Yeah, its taxonomy is humanoid, with okay. a particular. It's kind of a humanoid amphibian. Oh, I like it, amphibian. And its region is North America. Okay. What, what cryptid do you think this is? Give me a guess. It's an amphibian in 1950s America. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. 19, 19, 1955 America, we've got Rosa Parks w was arrested. Uh, we've got Johnny Cash's Folsom Pl Prison Blues. Okay. We've got, sure. uh, we've got, we're in the middle of the Cold War. So my thoughts are perhaps, it's humanoid in appearance. When was the Montauk Project? Uh, that I don't know. I think that's more, more, more recent. I'm, I'm thinking, so here, here's my train of thought. I'm thinking we're mid cold war and that mm -hmm. this is perhaps a nuclear test related cryptid given okay. the time period. I don't know. Is there a specific region in the U S like a state? I'll give you the state. It's Ohio. The Ohio. 
I'm going to call it the Ohio Merman as a guess. And that's with the just Ohio amphibian. I'm thinking it's located near like a, a reactor core coolant uh, facility. No? I like your logic. Yeah. But there's two problems. Okay. One, you forgot Back to the Future. Oh, okay. 1955 was the year that, that Marty McFly went back to the future to <laughs> almost fuck his mom. <laughs> that's an important fact. Yeah. <laughs> that That's historical fact. That's not fiction. That's historical fact. <laughs> and to be honest, it's probably more factual with more evidence backing it up ha- as happening than this cryptid. Oh, man. That's not a good sign. Two. Yeah. Mermaids aren't. Well, I guess mermaids are kind of amphibious because they can breathe above water in some things, but they kind of just stay in the water. Yeah. No, this this week's cryptid is one that I thought was more, uh, that I thought was bigger, I guess you could say. It's the Loveland Frogman. The Loveland Frogman. I'm, okay, From... here's what's up. I'm not going to lie. I didn't do any research, but I was like, I know what my next episode is. <laughs> really? <laughs> Did, were you like, what? what Really? Yeah, like I did zero research, but I just have a separate list that's not shared with you. <laughs> this is really your next your next episode? What well, you were like, planning? Not, not anymore. I, I didn't start doing any research, so I know literally zero about it. Okay. It was just on the list of things that I've heard of before, so therefore they may there may be more sources on it. Oh my god. Okay, so that's that's actually really funny to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this this week's episode is the Loveland Frogman. I, I, like I said, like Brandon just said, actually, it's one of those things that I'd heard of, but I never did literally any research into. I think I remember reading an article about it in like Weird US or something like that uh-huh. years and years ago, but. Outside of that, I never had looked into it a whole ton. Just to kind of give you an idea of where we're where we're located on this, Loveland, Ohio, is in the um, the southwestern portion of the state. At the time of the first sighting, the population was somewhere around two thousand. Oh, I believe that's small. Yeah, yeah it's pretty small. And yeah. at the time of the second sighting, it had ballooned up to about seven thousand. And then the most recent sighting around now is about 12,000. Okay, so to give you, uh, you, John, not you, the listener, additional mm-hmm. context. Yeah. My parents' house, that area, yeah, is, I think, 1,300 people. So if you add less than half more to that, and that's between where the post office and the college is and where the turnoff for – um for Binny water is Mm -hmm. that's that size of area. So Loveland is similarly sized. Well, it's similar. It's similarly populated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause it is a, it is a rural area. Yeah. For the most part. And like, if you look at the, if you're, I'm looking at the Wikipedia stats, it's about 2000 square miles. Okay. So that's the, the population density there is, you know, significantly less. Oh, wait, uh, oh no, it's about two thousand four hundred people per square mile. Oh, okay. Sorry, the size of the town is about five square miles. Yeah, that's still that's it, still not far off from from yeah from from that region near us. Yeah, so it's it's a but it's still in a rural area, which is yeah. an important fact to know. It's a rural area. The Ohio River is nearby, from what I read. The Miami River is nearby. I think the Ohio River is nearby. Yeah. A- the, anywho, well, the, the main river that's nearby is the Miami River. Yeah, there's probably like two main roads, and then a, everything else is just back roads, and some of them are unpaved. Yeah, the, which, just to kind of put you guys, everyone into the state of what we're talking about. So, before we get into the sightings, here are the, the here's the vague description that kind of carries throughout all versions of this cryptid story. In general, it stands about four, three to four feet tall. Okay. With a few outliers. It has this greenish skin, webbed hands and feet, a stoop posture, frog face, frog features, leathery skin. Yeah. Stuff along those lines. I mean, it's a frog man. It sounds very similar 
I'm drawing a big old blank. So that game that I that we played prior to me going to Elder Scrolls and you going to Final Fantasy, that had the the Elin. What was that? Terra. Terra. Yes. So that sounds a lot like there's a region in Terra Online that has similar. Like the description matches the baddies of that area. It's sort of a moderately level uh, area. Okay. I don't remember which one that is. But long story short, they're frogmen. Yeah. They're also believed to have magic powers in some accounts. <laughs> and it walks by pedally. Okay, so so they're they're okay. That that matches so even it's... better. The the, ter- yeah. the Terra online creature. <laughs> I can't remember now I'm gonna look this up. One second. That or I'm combining several creatures from several things frog people i'm just trying to think of it i mean it's been a long time since i played terra so it's not the cast this is audio poison never mind <laughs> so the first sighting occurred may 1955 okay it was performed by an unnamed businessman of variable occupation and i say variable <laughs> occupation because I found about five sources for the story. Oh, and did, did they all give him a different job? He has a different job in a lot of them. Oh, okay. So he's sometimes a businessman. Sometimes he's a traveling salesman. Yeah. Sometimes he's like the owner of a business. So it's one of those It's one of those stories. I gotcha. Um, he's on an unnamed road, which is sometimes named Hopewell. <laughs> and it's around 3.30 a.m. Okay, so hang on. Did, what do we know? What day of the week this sighting is? If I knew, I wouldn't believe what day of the week it was. Okay, because it's the reason... it's not in every story. <laughs> the reason I question it is because if he's a businessman, he's you know John Doe businessman, and it's three thirty a.m. What's he doing? That's a good question. Yeah, that that that's that's my first little uh, flag of red. That, that we're we're coming upon is what's this guy doing at three in the morning if he's a businessman because even on weekends i'm never out that late i'm, I'm never to even be, up that late uh, to be fair uh, since i became since i graduated college if i'm up at three thirty, something is deeply wrong or i'm dealing with something that is not enjoyable yeah oh yeah like uh, uh, unless you're tweeting. I've seen some early morning tweets. <laughs> okay. That was one time, and that's because I needed to finish the Black Shock. <laughs> because we were I, we were already a week behind our recording schedule on that one. Because my book arrived late, and I just wanted to get the Black Shock out of my brain. And I didn't know how long <laughs> it would take in the morning. So I was up till 2 a.m. One time. <laughs> <laughs> I All mean, is forgiven. I'm sort of impressed, by the way, that you got an episode together um, because to, to part the shroud, we record back to back, which allows us to have a full two weeks of research in between recording sessions so that we have actual we have enough time to get our sources and to do a write up for 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 the episode. So given that I'm impressed because this is a one week, this is a one weeker. And uh, I know that that I definitely sometimes need that second week to to collate everything. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I went through about five cryptid topics this week. Oh, man. I started researching no less than five. I bought a new book for one cryptid that I'm going to do in the future, so I don't want to spoil what it is. Yeah. But I bought a new book. I will say this. The guy might have... A fetish for the cryptid, but we'll get into that. That's amazing. We'll, we'll get into that uh, oh, on the episode that I do it. Yeah, it's pretty great. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> this was actually the first cryptid I was going to do for the podcast, but I decided not to do it because I was scared that there wasn't enough detail and that it smelt so much like a hoax that I didn't know if we would be able to fill the time. Yeah, but then I decided screw it let's do this and then i read i did the research through the week and then i did the write-up this morning in about (laughs) an hour (laughs) to be fair to be fair we have i I believe we've gotten more comfortable 
with doing the write-ups and judging how long we are. And we also don't have a hard, def- like, hard line definitive length uh, of the episodes. Yeah. It's just sort of however long it takes to go through all the information that we found. Yeah. So for people who love podcasts, hey. Now you know a little bit about what goes on behind the scenes. <laughs> For people who don't like it when the hosts talk about their podcast, sorry? <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Yeah. So, anywho, he was, uh, it was around 3.30 a.m. on, like I said, a sometimes named road, which is called Hopewell Road in one source, Hopewell. when he sees three figures. Okay. Three? Three. Okay. They're about... They're about three and a half feet in height. Are they doing anything in specific? Are they? Are we going back to the Dover demon he's driving past and they're on the side in the woods somewhere? Are they doing something? Is this another case of he's walking and just like that one kid in the 70s, he sees it in the street and then chases it? What's what, what's going on here? He's driving. He's driving. Okay. So he dry, he's driving. He notices three figures on the side of the road in some cases. In other cases, <laughs> they're on a bridge. And he pulls to a stop. Uh, headlights are on them. And they're like kind of talking amongst themselves or interacting with each other. Okay. He describes them as being bipedal and frog-like in appearance with leathery skin and deep ridges in their head. Okay. So... Basically, imagine the monster from The Shape of Water. Gotcha. Which is basically Abe Sapien from Hellboy. (laughs) And that's kind of what you're working with, just more frog-like. Okay, I follow. I like it. Are they up to anything? Are are they doing anything? Are they just just out for a chat and an evening or early morning stroll? Or are are they performing rituals? Are they hunting and gathering? Are they... It kind of reminds me of a bunch of, like, high school students meeting and then talking on the side of the road at, like, midnight. Okay. You know what I'm talking about, where they just kind of are just fucking around a little bit. Yeah. The businessman watched for a while. It doesn't say how long he watched for. But eventually, one of the creatures raises a wand above its head. They have a wand! Where'd they get a wand? Why is it a wand? I don't know. I don't know. But apparently, frogmen are magic. There, I was gonna say that there's a presupposition there, and that magic is real, and that you could go either two ways in that, and you can say this is either a pure work of fiction, or reality is not what it seems. Magic is real, and that's the reality I want. That's the one I want, John. Please, I know that's. Please water <sighs> this flower. I I know that's the one you want, but I'm also gonna. I'm also a firm advocate. Uh, Occam's Razor. Avada Kedavar! Oh, that didn't work. All right, never mind. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, I mean, you just tried to kill me, so yeah. I, I got to remember that. <laughs> That'll come up. Don't yeah. worry. Don't okay. worry. We had to do peer reviews. That'll come up. <laughs> Occam's Razor cuts deep. It does. Yeah. So does Avada Kedavar. <laughs> <laughs> um... So after he raises the wand, blue sparks in one account fly out of it like a Ooh. 4th of July sparkler. Ooh, okay. I like and then it. the man runs. So he... And by that, I mean he drives away. Did this frog creature literally cast... I'll... I just... Oh, okay. I lent the book to my sister's artist friend for a Halloween exhibit. But, mm-hmm. but, but in Mordekainen's Tome of Foes... The expansion mm-hmm. for Dungeons and Dragons. There is yep. a frog-like creature in there. It's a tribal creature that matches this description and may or may not have sparks as a castable spell. It might, and I'm pretty sure that creature might actually be based on this description. Oh, that would be I outstanding. Don't, I don't have any proof of that because I couldn't find any like clear evidence of that. And yeah. sometimes those types of sources are really hard to come by because uh-huh. unless... Unless the designer actually writes an article or has an interview with someone. Yeah. It's really tricky to find those things out. Oh, man. But, yeah, I think it might be... I, I know exactly what race you're talking about. I don't yeah. remember it off the top of my head. That's so good. That's yeah. so, I'm so happy. I, fe- I'm, I'm, I, I feel like I'm borrowing happiness from the future for this moment. What does that even <laughs> mean? I just... 
I'm trying to understand what borrowing happiness from the future is, yeah. and it makes me happy and sad at the same time. <laughs> Right, because it assumes that there's a limited amount of joy that there is, and that it's distributed at various points, but to be very happy in the present, you're taking a little bit from the future, and it's no longer going to be available. But for the moment, you're just very happy that your D&D book has this real creature in it. Well, real. (laughs) That tone, that tone that you just captured... Air quotes so well. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> so some accounts of this legend end here. Oh, okay. There are some, though, in which he goes to the police and brings them back to the spot where they find no frogs. Okay. However, the area does smell of almonds and alfalfa. Oh, like a bad candle. Yeah, that's, that does sound like a terrible candle, actually. That yeah, that that sounds uh, like something cows would eat. <laughs> oh no, no, no! This this has got a bad mouthfeel. Yeah, mm. is there a police report? If he got the police, I would assume that there's a police report because documentation is that, was a report filed. If there was a police report, I wouldn't be calling him an unnamed man. <laughs> that that's a very true point so is there here's my conspiracy theory one magic is real don't argue two this is a a, a deep deep yankee candle ad campaign for their almonds and alfalfa line of candles it wow comes with the free sparklers the fourth of july uh oh candle. My. it's got it's got one of those crackling wicks yeah <laughs> yeah the wood yeah. wicks the woodwick the woodwick okay guys the woodwick candle redwood is such a good candle you keep it in your kitchen right because that's typically people have to walk through the kitchen to get to the living room and it just smells so nice you get the the faint crackle from the candle they're great i i want to i want to couch that real quick yeah when people are visiting your house they have to walk through the kitchen yeah they go okay. through the kitchen they're presented after they go through the kitchen to a wall of fancy scotches and a giant painting of myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there, there are I, giant paintings of my cats in the living room. I've been to your house. <laughs> I know how this is. Oh, yeah. Ah, jeez, Louise. Um, but to, to wrap that up, the alfalfa and almonds story, I only found in two sources. Okay. One of them was a book. Oh, okay. Which I'm actually going to get to in a bit. Nice. And the nice. other one was claimed by a man who wrote, Hot damn! It's the Loveland Frog! <laughs> I can, in my, in, my, in my head, picture that text, that tom- font, that typeface, perfectly. Perfectly. So does it look, so does it look like, does it look like... We're, we're, this is a throwback, at least in my own mind, to the... Bat Boy style articles to the types of books that you would find uh, advertised in the Scholastic Book Fair magazine. That one, they're all fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I miss the Scholastic Book Fair. I'm not in school anymore. That was my favorite part of school. That I would, like, if I could convince the company I work for to host, to host a Scholastic Book Fair. An adult scholastic book fair. Yeah, but it's all the same kids for, like, the little kids. Because I don't care. I like those books, and I like high fantasy books that are absurdly thick. And there's nothing in between. (laughs) Goddamn, Brandon. (laughs) So you derailed me a little bit on that. But that's a 2014 musical. (laughs) (laughs) There's a musical for The Loveland Frog. Oh, Um, man. And the author of that, one of the one of the writers of the musical, as far or people who is responsible for the musical at the very least, yeah, he um he was responsible for this particular part of the legend. He might have picked it up somewhere else, but that's definitely definitely what he said happened. That's outstanding. I want so bad to hear some of this musical. I would love to, too. I couldn't find any uh, snippets of it. Oh. I only found out about it this morning. So if I had a, if I 
spent a little more time digging, maybe I might be able to find like a a, a live recording of it or something along those lines. Yeah. Is there musicals will frequently release their sheet music? Oh, I've got to try to. <laughs> I feel oh. like I've created a a strange quest for you. Yeah. Yeah, you um, did. Okay. I'm a little. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, You're gonna wake up at 3:30 a.m. to find me standing outside your front door with my acoustic guitar, <laughs> just doing well, the lovely musical. Oh Jesus! No, 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 no! This is like the worst version of an 80s romantic comedy. <laughs> so there is one report that I found as well that asserts that a woman was grabbed and tried, like almost pulled under. In a oh. nearby source of water. Yeah. yeah. Once again, unnamed. Man. Which actually uh, brings me to the issues I have with this. Yeah. And I'm going to break our usual format where we kind of tell you the story and then, you know, go over why we think it's bunk or what we think it could be or yeah. you know, all that stuff. Because there's not a lot of meat to this story. And that's my biggest issue. No. Do they, sorry to interject, do they list, the, uh, 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 or do they, is the relative age of at least these two individuals reported anywhere, regardless of, of how real or fictional it may be? No? No. Uh. I could find no contemporary news articles in reference to the Lovell and Frog sighting. Oh, man. None. Absolutely none. I'm also not the only person who hasn't been able to find skeptoid did an episode on this podcast and they're like i literally can't find any sources on this oh man shout out to brian dunning of the skeptoid podcast just fantastic fantastic he's he does he's like the a research. serious version he does the research he's like a serious version of this he i won't lie i went to his uh skeptoid page on the mongolian death worm because he lists his sources and i was going to try to use his area as a um a place to f- just to find sources because he does such good research. Yeah, for real, he's like the version of us that has that takes the time to make it serious. Oh yeah. Oh well, yeah. At the end of the day, yeah, we're trying to do our best in terms of research and give you the most full thing, but we're never going to not say don't do your own research because even if we were great at research, you should really do your own research. Yeah. He's got a great vo- I don't know why I like his voice so much, but I do. He's just, hello, I'm Brian Dunning, and welcome to Skeptoid. That's a really bad impression, but... <laughs> that was actually the worst impression of Brian Dunning yeah. I've ever heard in my life. It, it was... It was, it was the, I, my normal voice is closer. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Y- you actually went farther away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I was, by the way, thinking of subscribing to Skeptic Magazine, uh, at least the digital ooh. version, because they do offer a digital version. It's quarterly, Ooh. and you can also purchase the backlog issues at a reduced price. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. That sounds interesting. One, there's no contemporary news articles whatsoever. Not even like a police beat or, or something along those lines. Yeah. And we live in a relatively large, like middle-sized area, Yeah. and dumb stuff ends up in police beat all the time. Oh, yeah. And... At, keep in mind, at the time, Loveland, Ohio, only had a population of 2,000 people. Yeah. If something like this know. happened, it would be a real story in the newspaper, no doubt. A hundred percent. And for a town of that size, I know that I have relatives and I know other people who regularly look at Police Beat to see, one, what happened, and two, who was it because they either know the person or... Or, um, like, like, I've had relatives come up to me and go, hey, isn't this your friend? And, uh, like, it's such a small area that it's, it, people would know. People, people would, know. would know. And police speed would be frequently checked because everyone wants to know, you know, who do I know this time? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's no police report and there would be a police report. Yeah, a hundred percent. Uh, it might not be digitized if there is one, but I... I don't think this happened. The fact that the man is always unnamed and so is the woman also makes me think that's weird. Like, like this is not a thing. Yeah. Cause like most cryptid stories that we followed usually name someone. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very rare that the person remains unnamed. And then finally, and I think that this is the most damning piece of evidence against this. Uh oh. Creature from the ro- black regr- <sighs> creature from the black group. Regr- I like the creature from the black rancoon better because they are delicious. <laughs> The creature from the Black Lagoon released a year before this this happened. Oh, come on. Okay. Okay. Like, less than a couple months. This was in May, so it's like less than a full year since the creature from the Black Lagoon came out. So not... I just don't know, and this may sound like a dumb question, but I, I legit don't know. Did they have VHSs in the 1950s? Was the VHS a thing? No? No. Because no? remember Doctor Who created the VHS tape? Oh shit! Okay, because my he made the first one. My reason behind that question was a year sounds like it would be an appropriate period of time for the initial creature film to come out, and then a year later for it to hit VHS. That's not a thing in this case, but that's that's where my mind was going. Uh, it was originally developed in the early 1970s, okay. so it wouldn't have existed yet. Okay. Well, also keep in mind, this is a smaller town, so it's possible that that the creature from the Black Lagoon arrived in the town Mm -hmm. around this time, because keep in mind, distribution of of, uh, of film takes time. What what month was this again? Was this... uh, May. May. It was in May. So, my thought is now, drive-in theaters, definitely a thing, Mm -hmm. um... There may have just been a summer uh, summer horror f- uh, flick where they did like a, a back-to-back showing of two different movies and Creature might have been one of them. Yeah. So I I, I think that this is an urban legend. I yeah. think that this is a story that some kids in the town cooked up and it grew legs. Yeah. Because nothing about this. This is, this is like, this is kind of like Bunny Man Bridge or uh, something Bunny along those Man. lines. Bunny Man. Yeah. Uh, which I do want to talk about Bunny Man at some point, uh-huh. so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. Okay. But it kind of it kind of smells an awful lot like it because it's vague enough. It, it there's enough details to make it seem plausible. Yeah. But there's not enough details to make it seem real. Yeah. No, that's true. Totally. Yeah. There were also now about 15 years later or so. Uh-huh. Uh. Yeah, about 15 years later, another batch of sightings happened. Oh. But uh, before I get to that, uh-huh. I think oh. I think we got some stuff to deal with. Oh man, I don't. I honestly don't know who would happen this time. There, no, it's. I, uh, they're Frank reported me to HR because I did spray him with the pheromones and lock him outside the gates. Yeah, he he. Ooh. I saw I saw what happened to Frank. It's, I don't I don't. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I I I don't know I don't know how he survived. <laughs> to be totally honest. Today's episode is sponsored by Sleepatrix. Are you tired of those bad tasting sleep aids? Do you find they take too long to take effect? That's why when I'm in a pinch, I turn to Sleepatrix. It's colorless, odorless, tasteless, and the best part is there's no need to worry if you're on a job hunt. Sleepatrix is completely undetectable in all industry certified drug tests after only six hours. Never wake up unexpected again. Sleepatrix, now back to the show. I thought your baffle was a person standing behind you. Twenty-eight dollars a month for that. Twenty-eight dollars. Yeah, it does look like a person standing behind me. So, Lissa just linked me something that's twenty-eight dollars a month, and you get for you for six Gashapon items. What? Yeah, and you don't even know what Gashapon items you're pulling, oh, which is the worst part. It's just a a random. A random it's, item. It's a random Gashapon item. It's five bucks per. Why? That huh? You, yeah, you don't even get to pick the machine either. <laughs> Not that much left, actually. This is like a surprisingly light story compared to last week's, which was so informationally dense. <laughs> which 
actually, you know what? That's the reason why last week's story smelt so much like a lie to me. Was because of how much information there was. Yeah, the amount of detail. That it was, was a nightmare because that I wrote my full script using scanned copies of news articles. And oh, then no. Post completion found that someone else did a full type up and it was just hard to find. Jeez, that sucks. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's hop back into the story. Yep. So sightings two and three happened within a couple of weeks of each other. Okay. Uh, in 1972, March 3rd was the first sighting. Um, an officer, which in some accounts is unnamed, in other accounts is attributed to Ray Shockey, okay. is driving down Riverside Drive uh, on a late night patrol when he sees something strange on the side of the road. He assumes it to be a dog. Uh, he approaches it with his vehicle, and it leaps up, bounding across the road Ooh. through his headlights. Yeah. Over the guardrail and into the into the river. Okay. Um, he describes it as being three to five feet long, matted hair, leathery skin, and a frog-like face. Matted hair. So this is the first time hair is showing up. Was the yes. hair... Did he go into more detail? Was the hair all over its body, or was it just on its head? That's all the detail I have. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Reportedly, there were scrape marks on the side of the road leading down to the river. So it has claws or nails of some sort. Yes. Claws no. or nails that are harder than pavement. Well, no, no. It's not the pavement. It's like the embankment. Okay. To the river. Because it goes down to the Miami River, which was the same river from the first story. Okay. So even though there's scrape marks, this kind of has shades of Enfield horror. Yeah. Yeah. There's no images of it. <laughs> I'm happy, in case you can't tell, because I would I'm I'm looking for anything to cling on to, to yeah. even like be oh well it could have been X or it could have been Y. I'm getting nothing from this story. It sounds like there's precious little to go on on this story. So outside of the book that you that you found, were there? News articles? What, what what other sources are you looking up? At least up to this point on the first two. All of the news articles on this were written years after the fact. Oh, okay. There's not a single primary source on any of these events. Shoot. Okay. Um, Even the primary, the purported primary sources that happen after the event, yeah. I'm actually suspicious of. Oh, okay. So let me get into the second uh, sighting from this this year, and I'll get into I'll dig into that. So a few weeks later, the partner of the officer, who's sometimes referred to as Mark Matthews, uh, is driving down another road, and it's it's they make note of the fact that it's Kemper Road near the boot factory. And I would like to make note of the fact that it is Mark Matthews, yet another alliteration. Thank you, Marvel. <sighs> Well, we're close to Illinois. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, true. this is not that far from the events of the Enfield Horror, b oh, believe shit. it or not. Okay. This is not too far from Enfield, Illinois. So, Mark Matthews sees an animal lying on the side of the road. Yeah. And purportedly, it steps over the guardrail and maintains eye contact oh, with the police officer. Nice. Uh, it then runs across the road, jumps in the water, and the police officer fires a gun at it. Oh! Okay, so there's definitely some documents on this because there was a discharged firearm. Are there? <laughs> Don't do this to me. <laughs> there are no documents. There's no police report that I could find oh, on this. There's no police report that other people who have looked into this critically can find. This is a nightmare to find any corroborating evidence for at all. Like, oh, I wanted man. to be even a little bit, like, willing to be credulous. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this a little bit different than most episodes. Mm -hmm. Because there's just so much of a lack of credulous evidence that I can't in good faith do a segment going over four distinct sightings. Yeah. Because 
literally none of them are credible. Oh, man. Literally none of them. And people claim that, like, you know, use this, like, oh, look at this story. This is a thing. Yada, yada, yada. Uh-huh. There's no evidence. <laughs> this particular one, no contemporary articles. The first article I could find, the oldest article I could find on the Loveland Frog Band yeah. was 1985, and it was comparing it to the Paul Bunyan stories. Oh. Um, a professor of, I think, folklore. Yeah, uh, study of folklore. He basically says that he, it happens in cycles, and I haven't really pinned down the exact time range yet. Yeah. That was Edward Edgar Slotkin, who was responsible for that quote. Okay. Um, he thinks that it's like a cyclical thing. He thinks it's kind of more similar to Paul Bunyan or something along those lines. Uh huh. Legitimately, the first article I can find, the first police report, the first police anything I can find, is not until well after 1985. Okay. None of them are have any evidence of this event ever happening. The book I was reading. Yeah. It came from Ohio, was the name of the book. It's by uh, James Renner. Uh huh. Purportedly, he visits the first police officer to witness it, oh. a Ray Shockey Jr. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't find a Ray Shockey Jr. in actual existence. <laughs> of course. Of a course. Ray Shockey Sr. existed, yeah. but I don't know if a Ray Shockey Jr. actually existed. Oh, man. Oh, man. Additionally, the author, the, the, the supposed Officer Matthews, who once yeah. again, no clear evidence of actually existing because there's no photographic evidence of either of these officers. He recanted his story. Oh, he took it back. He, took he said it was an iguana. There's no taxi backsies. There's no taxi backsies. Especially well, the freaking iguana. Come on. So... How do you mistake an iguana, which I I can imagine will... They're definitely three and a half feet long. They're not bipeds. And they... There's just... I don't know how you could... Mis that's not an easy... I just don't see that. He said the story was a hoax. That and I can see. That I said, do see. He said that he shot it to show his partner. And it was an iguana that had, was missing its tail which made it look more like a frog. And his partner, Ray Shockey Jr., supposedly said, yep, that's what I saw. But <laughs> here's the problem. Yeah. This was done through email correspondence. There's no actual evidence of either of these people being real people that I could find online. Oh, man. There's stories about these people. This yeah. book says that he met this person, but... Just because a book says something doesn't mean it's real. If you can't find more than one source corroborating a person, or at the very least, a photograph of that person, your will it's it's okay to be skeptical that this person exists. If someone yeah. but however, if someone tomorrow showed me this a person with this name who made these claims and like shows me an actual picture, a birth certificate, some form of identification. I'll, I'll recant what I'm saying. Yeah. But I couldn't find anything. <laughs> Skeptoid couldn't find anything. Nobody can find anything. The only people who can find stuff are people who are already believing in the story. Yeah. Oh, man. So, that being said, our next story is recent. Uh, two years I ago. Like recent, recent, re two years ago. Okay, so here's what I like about recent. One, cell phone cameras. Two, yep. everyone puts everything online. So there has to be, there has to be something else to go on outside of just yep. uh, hearsay at a minimum. So, uh, August 2016, okay. 2016. Oh, let me summer. do that again. So let me do that again. Yeah. August 2016. Okay, so frogmen like the summer. We've got May. We've got August. We've got the months without an R in them. We're in summer. I the, at least there's somewhat sense. I don't see any frogs in the winter. Do you remember anything about uh, summer 2016 by any chance? Uh, something big happened 20 summer 2016. I don't recall. 
a lot. Is that when the it wasn't un- unstable? Was that when Unstable came out from Magic: The Gathering? No, no, that was that was last year. Twenty seventeen. Uh. Yeah. So August twenty sixteen. Yeah. Was when Pokemon Go was hitting its height. Yes. 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 That was a so, fun game, man. That was a fun game for the week that it was fun. Yeah. There was um, a solid week when I was out there. I was out roaming around the stockade district with my backpack and my battery pack, and I was getting them Pokemans. I was I was getting them gyms. I had a whole I had a whole I was a I had a whole gym to myself for like a solid couple hours until they they walked back around the block. Yep. And then everyone realized that they were getting that was it was exercise. <laughs> so anywho, yeah. a couple in the Loveland, Ohio area. Uh, Sam Jacobs and a trend that I'm noticing increasingly the more stories I covered yeah. his unnamed girlfriend <laughs> she's from um, Canada she's totally real yeah uh, they're playing Pokemon Go at night when they see a huge frog in the water and this is a direct quote from Sam yeah we saw a huge frog near the water not in the game Pokemon Go this was an actual giant frog I took a couple of pictures and video because I'd never seen one that big. Nice. Then the thing stood up and walked on its hind legs. I swear on my grandmother's grave that this is the truth. I'm not sure whether it was a frog vent or just a giant frog. Either way, I've never seen anything like it. So in a Cryptopedia first, yes. we have the actual video. Yes. But in Cryptopedia tradition... It suffers from the most debilitating flaw of any video. Oh, man. What's that? It's fake as fuck. <laughs> so I just linked you in the in the chat, the video. So just uh, open that and click play on that, that video player. Okay, that's... That, so what I'm looking at, it's a black screen. There are two points of light, which I assume we're supposed to think are eyes. They look mm-hmm. clearly like two, um, not flashlights. You know, they, they, there was infomercials yep. for these. They're, they're the dome lights that you put in a closet and you can poke them to make them light up. It's clear to me that it is those or something similar, two of them side by side, horizontal, shaky camera, and someone is holding them because they are looking to... Um, to our left, camera right, and then they pivot. They pivot 45 degrees to look in the other direction. But it is clearly, clearly super fake. Yeah. So if you look at the if you look at the enhanced image that I just linked you, someone toned up the vo- the brightness on the vi- the video. Yeah. And it's pretty much clear. It's a guy in a green hoodie. Oh yeah, well, like that. It's even th- that looks, <laughs> even the touch up, looks pretty fake because the 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 video we saw, those lights were much closer to the camera, and mm-hmm. I don't know if by turning up the brightness, how much that that would that would buy us. Yeah. So either way. Uh, I'm going to link this in the show notes. A hundred percent. It's a hundred percent fake. Like, I'm sorry. It's just fake. There's no way around it. Someone was fucking with someone. Like even people who are into cri- like more credulous about cryptids are like, yeah, that's probably fake. Yeah. Which if the cryptids wiki says it's most likely a hoax, it's probably a hoax. Oh, yeah. They are in the water. There is a reflection. I'm watching the video over and over. There is reflection in the water, so they're at least by the water. I legitimately think it was a dude in a hoodie who had those two lights on his head and just kind of walked around in shallow water. Oh, yeah. I might do a freeze frame later and try to uh, to do a little touch-up in GIMP to see if, uh, if I can't get something similar to that, that other uh, image that you linked. Yeah, so... Uh... <sighs> Listen, I- I'm going to go into some of the likely explanations for this, but I think it's pretty clear what this is. Yeah. So, uh, the first one is, what if it's reptilians? 
No. <laughs> because no. I, I didn't see anyone making this claim. It's just I had the feeling that someone's made this claim. Um the the most popular theory about what the Loveland Frogman is is something called a uh, Shawnahook, which is a tight wee Native American myth, supposedly. Okay. Um and I'm just gonna read a quote from uh the from a uh ba -ba -ba, an article I found on Shagath, which is a uh, like an article website. Okay. In reality, the Loveland Frog is a river demon known as the Shonahawk. Known to the Tightwee tribe of the area as early as the 1690s, the Shonahawk are a race of frog-like creatures that live in caves under the Little Miami and Ohio rivers. They have rubbery greenish skin, bulging eyes, and a large mouth that emits groans and croaks like that of a bullfrog. Shonahawk range between 3 to 4 feet in height and weigh between 50 and 70 pounds. They are intelligent creatures with some knowledge of magic. So, in reality, <laughs> the only place I can find any reference to this yeah. is on websites that are using it to support the claim of the Loveland Frog. Oh, come on. Everyone who looks at this with a skeptical mind and everyone who tried to research them yeah. found no evidence anywhere of this existing outside of this story. Yeah. So what I really think this is, is that it's an urban legend. It like, sounds um, like an urban legend. It's, yeah. it's a story that some high school kids came up with or some middle schoolers or someone told someone to freak them out. And yeah. it just kind of gained legs. Mm -hmm. It's folklore. Frog it's folklore legs. of the area. Yeah, frog legs. They hopped all around. Yeah. And the most recent sighting was just somebody capitalizing on that to get a little bit of limelight. Oh, yeah. That's all it is. And honestly, I don't have a whole lot more to say with it on this. Okay. This is definitely a hoax. It's the hoax from the Black Lagoon, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm almost positive yeah. it. I'm almost positive it, it's born from the monster from the La Black Lagoon because a lot of the a lot of the features of this creature remind me of that. Yeah, no, they they sound fair, like pretty similar height wise. Not so much, but the ridges, the skin, everything about it smells like the creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah. So, um, but before we end the episode, yeah. I've got something kind of special. Nice. So one of the things I was looking into, but decided to abandon because it was a little bit too, it, like it was, there was too little detail on it. Uh -huh. This week marks the, uh, what is it? 44th anniversary, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, wait, uh, one second. Yeah. This week marks the 44th anniversary of a cryptid. Oh, nice. Hell yeah. Which one? I um, love anniversaries. It's the crazy critter of Bald Mountain. The crazy critter of Bald Mountain. I yeah. like it. Um, supposedly it was seen by some, some motorists on the evening of November 17th, 1974. Nice. But it like crash landed on November 14th, which is coincidentally uh, the week that we're going to be releasing this episode. So are we saying this is an alien if it crash landed? Uh, most people think it's an alien. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because we might cover it in the future on like an alien grab bag or men in black episode. Yeah. But Hey, just so you guys know something happened this week. Yeah. That's going to do it for this week of uh cryptopedia. I think nice. As always, you can access our website at cryptopediacast.com. We got a bunch of links. Pretty much every link that I'm about to tell you is on that website. Now uh, you follow us on Instagram at cryptopediacast. Uh, we have a SoundCloud that has nothing on it. You can email at us at cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. We now have a Patreon, Woo! which we talked about last week. Uh, just search Cryptopedia on Patreon. It'll take you there. Or click the link that's going to inevitably be on the website when this releases. Hell yeah, man. We got $1, $2, $5 tiers. It's great. It pays for books. It does. That's really the main thing we use it for. We pay for books because honestly... Um, we like to support the sources that we, we use. We also have a Facebook group, which you can always join if you so choose. Unless you're a shoe wizard. Shoe wizards aren't allowed. Sandal wizards, however, are. 
That's right. It's weird. It's 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 one of those things. If you like the show, please remember to rate, review, subscribe on any platform that you so choose. Spotify, iTunes, uh, Stitcher, Google Play. We, we're on all of them. Just search Cryptopedia. You can find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. That's B-O-Y-E-R, the letter B, dot com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon, capital C, capital B. And you can reach me on Instagram at mu2057, on Twitter at JF Dunham. My website is probably still defunct, johndunhamgames.com. And you can email me at john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. His Instagram is at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. And of course, as always, if you've got any monster ideas, review, uh, requests, stories, uh, crypto, uh, cr- creepypasta, crypto, po- cryptid pasta. Ooh, Ooh I like add that. that in now. Cryptid pasta. Yeah, if you got anything like that, always feel free to send us an email on uh, the show account, and we'll try and get it into like a super episode or something like that. Or if you have some suggestions, we'll try to incorporate them. Corrections as well. Oh yeah, I have no problem. I have no problem uh, with corrections because at the end of the day, this is more about spreading literacy of doing your research. That's right. But anyways, as always, uh, this has been Cryptopedia. I'm John Dunham. I'm Brandon Boyer. And things are going to get weird. The following is not from Hot Damn the Loveland Frog, mentioned earlier, but from the Paranormal Song Warrior on YouTube. Oh, it's the Loveland Frog. It's a frog that lives in Ohio. See the Loveland Frog hopping around. It's not a normal frog. It is a big old frog. It's a half-human frog.